D-Lo, ay, yeah Clutch I'm in the clutch, we in the clutch, it's even been clutch You think that we suck, your dreams are the luck Your ship is just sunk, we turn off away, ooh, yeah See that my face is up in disgust Because people talking a mess, but there's nothing to discuss I'm just being honest, I'm keeping it a bug, uh-huh We in the clutch! What's going on, Clutch? What? what up, what up, what up? It's your boy Duck. It's your boy Ross. We're in the Clutch. Hey, hey. back to listen, gentlemen, of the video today. You feel me? The dumbest lottery winners of all time, man. Law of all time, the dumbest lottery winners. You messed it up at I the did. beginning. Yeah, I did. it's okay. It's okay. We all make it. mistakes. We yeah. all make mistakes. We Just do. like these individuals made mistakes by blowing all their damn money. Yeah, man. I'm, it's crazy I'm, how much, you know, people get all these fortunes and funds, but it just show you how much you don't know how to be rich. Yeah, bro. Like, a lot, it's crazy. A lot of times people do end up getting these large sums and they blow it. I'm it's sorry. Taxes, man. Goddamn taxes. Oh, yeah, because you got to pay taxes <clears throat> on it every year. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, they take out a huge chunk when you initially get it. But you still left with some millions that you should invest. They be wrong. And, and, you know, I don't know. Try to <laughs> make sure that you have the money for you and your future generation. I'm sorry. You blow $50 million, that's after taxes and stuff. That's on you, bro. You should get a house car and then businesses. There you go. Investments. And not dumb investments. Like, oh, yeah, let me help our little Ron Ron on his T-shirt mm -hmm. business. Knowing damn well he not uh -huh. about to do nothing with it. We're talking about investments that you research and people. A little run, run. Yeah, people are gonna, you know, actually be able to get you your money back time some. And we're not talking about uh the crypto scams and and uh the pyramid schemes and no Forex. Yeah, the you give me two thousand, I'll make it to two hundred thousand. Like, no, no. We're talking about real stuff that you look into. So we're I'm gonna check this to out. See, man. Man. Let's get into this right now, man. Make sure I run up the lights. I don't subscribe. see the forex niggas like that no more. Yeah, of course. These niggas didn't disappear like they, Thanos. They didn't die. Only throwing down. a three million pound lottery ticket in the bin to spending an entire sixteen million dollar prize in under ninety days. These are the absolute dumbest lottery winners of all time, beginning with Jose Antonio Quartok, who almost lost his entire lottery fortune after getting someone else to claim the money for him. You see, when Jose won the seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar jack pot back in 2010. He was living in the US illegally, so Jose oh. asked his boss to claim the prize on his behalf, as he feared he couldn't claim the money without potentially facing legal trouble and deportation. Oh. This worked out perfectly wow. until Jose's boss began to falsely state that he was the one who had actually purchased the Come ticket. On, Taking legal action against his boss was risky, given Jose wasn't supposed to be yeah. in the country at all. However, given he had security camera footage of him purchasing the ticket, Jose did so and was able to prove that he was the rightful owner to the $750,000 oh. prize. Only $250,000 this went to taxes, another $250,000 was spent on court fees, and throughout the legal process, Jose was jailed for drunk driving and was deported back to Guatemala as soon as he won the court case. However, at least Jose Antonio Quartok got to keep some of his winnings, as Denise Rossi wasn't so fortunate. Uh -oh. When Denise won a jackpot of $1.3 million back in okay. 1996, she'd been married to know. Thomas Rossi for over 25 years, yet their relationship was apparently was lacking in transparency. Yeah, no, nah, that's a different type of money. That's a different, you know. With inflation now, that's probably at least maybe like five million or something like that. Nah, it's, it's up. Yeah, one point three and ninety six. Mm -hmm. Oh, bro, twenty dollars and ninety six. You was good you for was the week. Good. So if you had one point three, you gas really, was, you yeah. really was like <laughs> on some shit, bro. Because gas was a dollar. Oh, it was you cheap, can buy bro. houses for real cheap. Oh like, my god, oh, yeah. you was up. Ooh. Berency, as Denise didn't tell her husband about the win and instead filed for divorce only 11 oh. days after buying um, the lottery I'd ticket. Heard. I was afraid to tell Thomas because I knew he would try to take the money away from me. I went to the lottery commission office and told them I was married but contemplating divorce. They told me to file before I got my first check, which I did. Uh, Denise was initially successful in hiding the money from her now ex-husband as for a whole two years after their divorce, Thomas had no idea that Denise had ever won the lottery. Damn. However, in May 1999, a letter was sent to Thomas's home address asking if Denise was interested in a lump sum buyout of her lottery winnings. This was the first oh. Thomas knew about the lottery prize. He confirmed hmm. that Denise was a winner with the California lottery, and given they were still married at the time of the win, Thomas launched a lawsuit stating that he was entitled to half of the prize money. Yeah. The judge specifically found that Denise's failure to disclose the lottery uh -huh. winnings constituted fraud, oppression, and malice, yeah. and as a result, the trial court awarded Thomas 100% of the oh. lottery winnings, which left Denise with less than nothing, considering she also had to pay for her 
her own legal fees. Wow. Oh, However, hey, Denise's that, loss man. of damn city boys was up before city boys was. <laughs> oh yeah, before it even existed. <laughs> damn. Damn. I'm thinking maybe he gonna get half. No, he got all 100 yeah, percent of that, bro. Of what was left, because yeah, that's two years later. Damn. Ooh. She thought she did something. City Boys was up before they was even a thing. Damn. That's crazy. Shit. 1.3 million was still nothing in comparison to Evelyn Adams. Uh -oh. Dubbed the luckiest this woman in America, worse. Evelyn Adams became the first person in human history to win the lottery twice. Oh, initially damn. for 3.9 million in October 1985, what? before winning another 1.4 million only four months later. Okay. With the probability whoa, 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 of this Oh, yeah, now nah, that's some whoa. shit now. What you doing, lady? Whoa, the man upstairs has to be. I got you, my child. This I got you mint. again, my child. Imagine you. you went in, that's in the 80s. Yeah. Imagine you win that much money in the 80s. And that then was even more than the 90s. Four months later, you win even more money, oh, bro. bro. We going crazy. <laughs> what? I'm going to start opening up lottery sessions. That's, wow. How the to win. odds of that happening <clears throat> is astronomically insane. Mm-hmm. I, all I can what 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 do you say? It's just, she it's won the, twice. It's the man upstairs. It was, it was my time. Right. I want to see how she blew all this. For I, I when being approximately you know, one in 17.3 trillion, oh. Evelyn seemed to realize that she had no lottery luck left by stating Those that she was odd. going to yeah. quit playing and instead began to buy various businesses, including the convenience store where the lucky tickets had been purchased. Okay. While you could argue that this was a smart move, Evelyn still hadn't fixed her gambling problem oh. and instead of buying more lottery right. tickets, she instead took the rest of her winnings to the Atlantic City casinos oh, where she lost her entire remaining fortune oh. to the slot machines. Without any money left, her businesses failed one after the other and by 2012, Evelyn was living in a trailer park while Whoa. stating to the media, winning the lottery isn't always what it's cracked up to be. Kelly Rogers likely had a similar outlook as after winning over 1.8 million pounds at the age of only 16, oh, her whoa. life was also ruined. Initially, Kelly stated, I will not go wild and spend loads. I'm gonna take some advice and see an accountant. <laughs> Hopefully I will make us all comfortable. I wanna help my family, but I won't change. I just want a normal home, nothing posh. I just want a normal car as well. So However, we as soon as she received the money, Kelly instead spent eleven thousand five hundred pounds on two boob jobs, three hundred thousand pounds on clothes, makeup, and tattoos, as well as eighty-five thousand pounds on top of the range sports cars. Kelly spent a further two hundred and fifty thousand pounds on holidays to locations including Mexico and Euro Disney, one hundred and eighteen thousand pounds on gifts to former boyfriends. Uh, hey, city boys, up again! <laughs> it never fails. Imagine if you wanted them exes. Shit. You know what I'm saying? Bro, she spent 190,000 pounds in unreturned loans to friends and family members. 190,000 pounds in unreturned loans to friends and family members and 50,500 pounds on solicitors fees, all of which being purchased while she was still in high school. Kelly did make a few smart purchases such as an 180,000 pound bungalow and a 96,000 pound home for her mum. However, by the end of the year, Kelly was back to square one, being on welfare with only 2,000 pounds left in her account. Wow. She since stated it was too much money for someone so young. Even if you say your life won't change, it does and often not for the better. Yeah, I just wish I was a bit older at the time of winning it because I think at 16 you're still just a child yeah, and overnight just yeah. you've just got to grow up and become an adult. Which is probably why she's now an advocate for raising the UK's legal gambling age from 16 to 18. Kelly Rogers certainly spent her money poorly. However, at least she had the chance to spend it as 25 year old Amanda Clayton from Detroit was no longer alive by the end of her spending spree. Oh, when Amanda won the million shit. dollar jackpot back in 2011, it seemed as though her life had been changed overnight. However, her win quickly became controversial after the media learned that she was still collecting food stamps and benefit payments despite having won the lottery. Yeah. Detroit woman oh. is now the second lotto winner in the state to keep taking food stamps after hitting it big. And Amanda Clayton, who won a million bucks and took home a $700,000 lump sum, the 24-year-old says even though she now owns two homes, she figured she was still allowed to use a bridge card. After being confronted oh, no. about the behavior, Amanda had the following to say. I thought that they would cut me off 
off, but since they didn't, I thought maybe it was okay because I'm not working. And shortly thereafter, she was charged with two felony counts of welfare fraud and was ordered to pay back the $5,500 worth mm. of food stamps she'd received. Which While Amanda quickly paid the $5,500 yeah. back, she never got the chance to spend the rest of the money, as only six months later, she would unfortunately overdose in one of her two homes. Damn. She said she was tormented by the fame and the problems that came with winning Damn. the lottery. Well, what's the point of having money if you're not going to have happiness? He says she didn't want right, the money true. anymore and bought things for her family and set up college funds for her children. He says she only had $67,000 of her winnings left. The end to Amanda Clayton's story was somewhat unexpected. Damn. However, a two-second glance at Ryan McGee is more than enough to predict that this lottery win would eventually end in I'm disaster. Good. After winning £6.4 million pounds back in 2008 Ooh. at the age of 27, Ooh. Ryan was placed on the Sunday Times Top 100 Rich List for young people. He purchased a luxury mansion in his home country of Ireland, which featured five bedrooms, an indoor swimming pool, a full Ooh. champagne bar, and a two-car garage where he kept his brand new Ferrari 458 Italia. However, Four. as you might expect, this is where things began to go terribly. Only three years after buying the Ferrari, Ryan slipped off the road, crashing the car into a oh. field, mainly because he was driving in the snow. Oh. Locals were amazed Ryan was driving the Ferrari in that weather, Why especially when he had a more suitable Range Rover he could use. The Ferrari was not understood to be running. Nah, it's bro. situations like this. Come on, bro. If you bought a you bought a range for a reason. Oh my god. I'm not pulling that out in the snow. No, I'm not. I'm pulling that out on a summer day. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got a range. <laughs> That's what they're made for. For inclement weather. I'm not running on winter right tires, right. which, while costing around £4,400, hugely boost grip and handling in icy conditions. Ryan's property development business so then dissolved, which was accompanied by a divorce from his wife and the sale of his luxury home. Then, two years later, Ryan McGee was pulled over driving an uninsured Ford Focus without a license. <laughs> However, the most interesting part is that he had to claim legal aid, which is a service for those who are unable to afford a lawyer. Mm. Now, Ryan McGee was a complete idiot with his money. Of However, course. he still looks like Albert Einstein when compared to Martin Tot. When Martin and his wife Kay won three million pounds back in 2001, oh, they didn't worse. go in to claim the prize because, well, they had no idea that they were winners. They purchased a ticket in passing, completely forgotten about it, and would only come to realize that they were the winners after hearing about the unclaimed prize over six months later. Oh. The main problem was that at some point, the ticket had been misplaced or thrown out completely. <sighs> Despite frantically searching, the pair couldn't find their ticket, but were sure they had won because the jackpot numbers matched the one they used every week. Computer records in their local Londis proved Kay really had purchased the ticket and the thrilled pair rushed to tell lottery oh. organiser Camelot to claim their prize. Damn. But they fell victim to a little known rule stating lost tickets must be reported within <gasps> 30 days. Damn. After 45 days of deliberation, Camelot told the devastated couple that they would not be collecting the jackpot oh, and as a result, hurt. the couple's marriage eventually came to an end. Oh, We'd only known each damn. other for two years and the lottery ordeal quickly highlighted our differences. All we did was bicker. Sadly, both of us agreed we should split that, and Kay that's, moved that's out. Uh... Man seems to have convinced himself that losing the ticket ended up being a good thing, having stated, for a long time I lost sight of who I was and what I believed in. But I can honestly say I'm glad I didn't get the three million now. There is no guarantee it would have brought me happiness, it's and if there's anyone else who would have agreed true. with this statement, well, it definitely would have been the most miserable lottery winner of all time, William Post. When William won a $16.2 million jackpot back in 1988, he had just $2.40 cents in his oh, bank account. Oh, that's six, boy, let's talk about a blessing. Sit, bro, two dollars back then could get you something for yeah. real. 16 million. You was probably one of the richest people in the world at that yeah. time, bro. 16 million in the 80s is completely different now. Dog. That's damn near like a close to like 50 to 100 million dollars. Yeah, it is. That's wild. Woo and was able to purchase the lucky ticket by selling a ring for $40 to a local pawn shop. This, wow. in conjunction with the time he'd spent in jail for cashing invalid checks, highlighted William Post's awful money management skills and acted as foreshadowing for how poorly his lottery win was eventually going to be spent. Mm. Only 84 days after receiving the $16.2 William Post had spent the entire fortune on a boat, a lease for a restaurant in Florida, 
I used car lot as well as a private jet. However, even after all of the money had been spent, Post took on a further $500,000 loan to purchase a mansion in Oil City, Pennsylvania. What? The problem was that William hadn't actually purchased the original ticket himself and had rather given the money to his girlfriend who had bought the winning ticket for him. Oh. Because of this, she was able to successfully sue him for one third of the winnings, meaning yeah. the Post now owed $5.4 million to his ex-girlfriend <clears throat> from the $16.2 million that he no longer had. Oh. Since Post was unable to make this payment, the judge ordered that his bank account be frozen until he was able to come up with the money. Damn. However, before he was able to sell enough stuff to pay the $5.4 million, William was arrested and ordered to serve a 6 to 24 month prison term for an assault Damn. charge from 6 years prior. Toward the end of his so life, Post was on his 7th marriage with over a million dollars in debt and was Damn. getting by on food stamps at a job paying $450 per month. However, William Post oh, still doesn't have the craziest lottery win story of all time. Damn. That title so goes to no Andrew money. Jackson Whitaker, whose life would change forever after winning $315 oh. million back in 2008. Yeah, that's, that's an, an O2? O2? Yeah. So I'm, that's easily, that's easily like 800,000, 800 million, bro. Well, he ain't getting all that either. Two. Yeah. Unlike almost everyone else in this video, Whitaker was actually quite successful prior to winning the lottery, mm. having built up a net worth of over 17 million oh. with the assistance of his construction company. Oh, and while this would imply that he was in a position to manage a large lottery win, this isn't what would happen. Whitaker instantly donated 10% of the winnings to churches, Christian groups, and spent a further 14 million mm. establishing okay. the Jack Whitaker Foundation, Sweet. which provided free food and clothing for low income families in West Virginia. Okay. Obviously, you're doing God's work with all this. Money. Yes, I am. I'm helping a lot of people and I plan to help a lot more. He then drove back to the convenience store where he had purchased the ticket before giving the clerk a $44,000 check, a $123,000 oh. house, oh. and a brand new Jeep Cherokee, which was followed by Whitaker buying himself a Lamborghini in which he'd drive around his neighborhood throwing money out of the window. Whoa. After flaunting this wealth, his Lamborghini was broken into yeah. where thieves stole $545,000 in cash. Oh However, this. Oh my! Why would you keep. Over half of you kept over. Damn, there's no way. I mean, it's I'm, I'm cool because he's trying to do the good give to the community, yeah. giving to the guy that work at the gas station. That's awesome. The throwing the money out the window, eh, I think that's a little bit too much because you're drawing too much attention to yourself. Yeah, but leaving over a half a million in your in your car in cash, liquid cash. No, bro. There's, uh, no, 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 you put that shit in the bank. You may have some money on you, but you keep that shit in the fucking bank, bro. You do not leave over. You don't, for a lesson to all y'all, don't leave no cash in the car. Never. Bro. I don't give a damn if it's coins. Yeah, trust me. I, I got robbed for some coins, my nigga. Do not leave no cash in the car. You can get your window replaced, whatever the situation is, but you can't get that money back. There's no insurance on that. That's crazy. Um, I would have been sick. This apparently oh. wasn't much of a wake-up call, as his car was then broken into for the second time, resulting in the loss of a further $200,000 cash. Jack what Whitaker's granddaughter passed away, his daughter then passed away, oh. which was followed by a divorce with his wife. And now you've lost your granddaughter, you're about to be divorced from your wife. Where does this ever end? Leading him to state that he had lost everything. I pretty much lost everything I had. Oh out here in my life. You got lots of money. Money is money money has never meant anything to me. You have I to see. have money to exist in this world, but money money doesn't rule the world. Money money is not what makes people happy. And that he wished he had never purchased the lottery ticket in the first place. My wife had said she'd wish that she'd torn the ticket up. Well I wish that we had torn the ticket up too. I just don't like what I've become. Damn, Damn bro. bro. Jesus That's tough. He was trying to do it right, bro. He was trying to just give money away and, you know, certain things, but it'd be like that. Jeez, That's bro. That's tough, man. Hey, man. Hate once, to hear it. Once again, hey, money, it shows you. It's not It's not the route to, to happiness, man. Happiness, you got to have within yourself, you know what I'm saying? And you got to look and see what extremes people are willing to go to to, mm -hmm. to take and steal that money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People kill people, and it's it's getting worse and worse. Yeah. You know, but you see how extreme people go just for money. Yeah, so man. that that should be a lesson to you, man. This video is eye opening to folks to let you know you can be rich as hell. Yep, and, and still the most be miserable. Facts. So bro. make sure you got your peace of mind for First, anything. Yeah. Like for sure. But Facts. if y'all enjoyed the video, man, you already know what to do. Make sure you run up the likes, subscribe. Let us know what else we want to be 
you want us to check out, comment down your thoughts down below. What do you think about this situation? Do you know anyone that was, you know, that had a lot of money and it just kind of seemed like things wasn't right, even though they had money? I don't know. Tell mm -hmm. us your story down below. But uh, we love you. Keep on spreading love, being love. Catch y'all in the next video. Clutch Squad, we out. Already. This bitch is from Houston. If you got a problem, then we got the solutions. And there's no illusion. I made this shit happen. I'm living life lucid. I'm switching my strategies. Now they hate on me because I'm causing casualties. But why are they after me? Deep inside, they know they can't handle half of me.